Last week, we talked about her friend Sarah, that she was going to... What is this? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what? At, staring at Ronnie. Okay. Last week, we played a little bit of Sarah's polygraph exam, kind of the intro to yeah. it, and realized that Sarah self-described herself as being Tanya's best friend. But I know when I was in high school, how kids were about, this is my best friend. Oh, you, you, yeah, she's my best friend. Oh, that, pre yeah, that's yeah. my best friend. You know, everybody's your best friend. Not me, because I hated everyone in high school. <laughs> I only have like two friends, period, and they're both my best friends. Right. And one of them is my sister, so. <laughs> <laughs> the other one's me. Yep. Okay. All right. We'll go with that. Now, Tanya also had a crush on Sarah's boyfriend. So I can't imagine they would be best Ooh. friends if she had a crush on her boyfriend. And it was mm -mm. rumored that Tanya had kissed him. Now, if someone kissed my boyfriend, even now, if you kiss my husband, <laughs> I'll whip your ass. So <laughs> if I was in high school... Same situation. We're not going to be best friends. We're not going to be hanging oh, no. out. And I would make sure that everyone in the school hated you. I'm right. picturing some sort of hair pulling situation, like mean girls, like Tanya and Sarah just going at it, or like, you know, somebody's outfits getting ripped, you know, just yeah, like bitchy you're not stuff gonna say, like that. Hey, let's go hang out this weekend. Yeah. We're best friends. Now, in the interview with the officer, Sarah says that the last time that she talked to Elijah was on around that Wednesday night, the last time she had seen him prior to her going missing. And that had to be a lie because the Wednesday night, she says she drove him back to Topeka because he lived on the other side of the tracks. He had been from that area but then he moved and she said the only transportation that he had was back and forth with her and she said she took him back on Wednesday well the officer says look I can tell you right now that Elijah told me that he was at Haney's house that night that Tanya got dropped off there. Wasn't, oh, I was just going to say, if that's where she went. Yeah. And so. Well, his girlfriend is where? Going off somewhere else. To, to the, like, kids club? Yeah, to the kids club. <laughs> <laughs> the big kids club. And so Sarah's response is just kind of like, well, I mean, I'm, I guess he could have been, maybe he was behind the door or something when I dropped her off. What? what? Nobody does. That is, they just watched the movie Scream and found the, that was like, the, that's all It was she just did. a dumb thing to say. That's exactly when that movie came. Like, because if, that I movie don't care if I was sitting too. with a cop. If they told me that my boyfriend had been there, I would have been like, are you fucking kidding me? He was at that house when she went. I mean, it would still be raw in me if that, if that happened. Yeah. But so she was like, no, he, well, maybe he was behind the door. And they said, so you didn't talk to him that whole weekend. And she Bullshit. said, no. Yeah. So everybody had she's a pager lying. then. Yeah. You would have paid. Everybody had their codes. You paged each other. Yes. Hi, call me. Love you. Where are you? Everybody she knew had their where codes. He was. Oh, yeah. Here's the next thing. Now, when Steve who is the guy who left at 9 o'clock that night because of his probation phone call. When he went home, her mom, Tanya's mom, ended up going and interviewing Steve at his house. She kind of went along with her private investigator that she got years later, and she took a recorder and put it in her purse. <clears throat> so oh, that that yeah recording. she's like super okay. sleuth and i commend her for it because that would be me i'd be going door to door if nothing's being done so she goes and she records one thing about the recording and i don't know how she kept from just freaking out is 
in this recording, the <laughs> smoke alarm, the smoke detector, the battery was going dead in this guy's I'm house. I'm fucking punch something right now. Just oh, hearing. the whole time. You're just telling me. Beep. 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 She should have just been. I would have just been like, hey, can you, you go got a battery? Because I can run down what? to Target or Walmart and dollar store, whatever. And I can get you some double A or a, a nine bolt. It was a dollar general and they had a horse tie out <laughs> there too shut up so i i would have been like, i can run and get you a nine bolt and we can take care of this right now who can live like that not me i can't either it was it drives me crazy list too i don't know how she didn't just snap and kill him anyway i would have been like can we go talk outside <sighs> yeah it was I, very that's annoying. the worst it is it is the worst i remember when i was living with a friend of mine um, there was this beeping coming from his basement and it, it's, it was a dead smoke detector, but we couldn't find it. It turns out they had, the previous owners had finished the basement and put drywall up <laughs> in, front, <laughs> in front of the smoke detector. Oh my God. And so now the battery was finally dying and you had just, you just had to live with it until I it finally died out. I would have demo and kick oh, yeah. the drywall. I would have been like, I, well, it's right here. So cut this yes. hole, put it back up, and we'll I, paint it I eventually. I couldn't stand it. Absolutely couldn't stand it. So she goes in. She starts interviewing him, and she asks him about that night whenever Tanya disappeared. Because in her mind, she thinks Steve may have had something to do with it. And Steve says that he was really good friends with Tanya. Best friends. Again, best friends. Now, Everybody is my Steve says that when he was at... Haney's house that night before he left at nine that Tanya was there interesting because Sarah says she dropped Tanya off around 10 30 that night well Steve left in time to be home by nine and so then she, he left at like eight forty-five. yeah because he walked home it was just a block and a half now the other thing is he also said there were several people there, and Sarah and Crystal were among those people. So Sarah has lied about a lot. Yes. I, okay, go on. Now, if Sarah and Crystal were at the house, that's a huge lie because Sarah says that she just dropped Tanya off. Tanya went up to the door asked if she could stay, and then came back and told her she was staying and then went back to the house. So she made it seem like she didn't even go up near the house. You know what, though? What if, okay, just going to play devil's advocate. What if him saying they were there was her parked in the driveway waiting on Tanya to come back? Maybe. but Just, just to throw out devil's advocate. But how would he even know that they had dropped her off. I mean, uh, Tanya could have gone in and said they dropped me off, but how, why would he consider that as they were there? Yeah. You know, when, but again, we're looking at teenagers saying this side of the story versus this side of the story. Now, it's like outsiders. Yes. And he says Elijah was there. So that's another point for Elijah being there. Now, Elijah, Another thing about Elijah is Debbie, the mom that was at the house, Haney's house, first of all, it was a party house. They said that you could smoke pot there. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people hung out there late because it was a pot smoking house. And that Debbie said that she pointed out Elijah and said that she saw Tanya walking home with Elijah. So when Tanya left to walk home, Elijah went with her. So that puts Elijah and Tanya headed home from Haney's house at the same time. But didn't Elijah end up going back to shower? Yes. Okay. So then Steve says... Why did he need to shower again? That's a good question. So then Steve said that he got a knock on his window when he was at home and it was Elijah and he asked if he could come in and take a shower. He had a duffel bag with him. And after he came in and took a shower, 
he left and went over to his friend's house. So he just came in his house to take a shower. I don't know about older teenage boys, but I know about one teenage boy at least. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't shower that often. Right. He definitely would not go knock on somebody else's door. No. When he or was window. asked what time it was when Elijah came to shower, he couldn't remember exactly, but he said he thought it was just before midnight. So we have a weird time frame situation here because the mother at Haney's house said that it was around midnight whenever they left. And there was a lot that had to go on during Tanya's murder. They had to walk to the graveyard. Her clothes had been changed. She was in a man's t-shirt and the jacket was missing. The shoes were missing. You know, there was a lot that went on. We don't know if she was sexually assaulted, but assuming that she probably was. So was he going to Steve's house to shower and then meet her in the graveyard? Or was he going to his house to shower after he murdered her? You would think he would be covered in blood. That's what always kills me, is that people aren't covered in blood. Like, how are they not? I guess it depends on how he killed her. We still don't know. There was a I get little a leak. Mail and I, like, have blood everywhere. Like, yeah. There know. was a little leak by, I believe it was the private investigator, that she was stabbed to death. And if that's the case, you would then be you covered, would definitely be covered have in blood. blood. And I think that's why it's in the back of my head that possibly... Unless he took... He wasn't wearing his shirt and he put it on her. Well, because she was wearing... Right. Because she was wearing the shirt. Didn't they right. say that the shirt that she was found in isn't something that they didn't recognize as hers? Yes, it wasn't hers. It was a, a guy's shirt and it said, like... If you don't like this, dial one eight hundred eat shit or whatever, yeah. if you, you know something like that. And yeah. it was a shirt that nobody said that she would have been wearing. And it also, um, it was reported that she had been wearing a blue t shirt that night. So it wasn't and that's what she had been, been right. Found. Okay, and that wasn't found. So the theory is that possibly the duffel bag that he had that night had her shirt in it. But why would he change her shirt? Like, that part doesn't make sense. Now, Cause if the interesting thing is she had borrowed Steve's Dallas Cowboys jacket. Mm -hmm. And she had been wearing it. You know, she borrowed a lot of his Dallas Cowboys stuff. And then someone's sister got, has it now. Yes. So then her jacket and her shoes were missing. Her shoes belonged to Sarah. Those were Sarah's shoes. So the shoes are missing. The jacket was missing. So a lot of people think that it was Steve and Sarah that did it because they took their items back. But the jacket was actually recovered by Elijah's girlfriend's little sister. Not Sarah. This was later on a different girlfriend. So Elijah sold it to his girlfriend's little sister. And then she... Gave it to police. Now, when questioned how he got the jacket, Elijah said that Steve sold it to him. And Steve said, no, I didn't sell him my jacket. Last time I saw it, I gave it to Tanya. So how did Elijah get the jacket? I've got a theory. If he didn't I'll take it off her end. body. No, you can go ahead. So I think that Sarah came back to the house and said, and or knew somehow that Elijah was there and then they she asked for Sarah or Elijah and they weren't there they left to go hook up out away from the crowd and then she found she tracked them down and they murdered her because he would have done whatever his girlfriend wanted right because he didn't want all of the right. teenage drama and that it. happens all and the time and then he took his coat back if you do a Google search or on jealous coat. teenage mm -hmm. murder, that happens a lot. The girls will say, if you love me, you'll do this. If you want to stay with me, yep. you'll do this. You have to kill her now. Or, or like the girl who made her boyfriend murder him, like kill himself. Right. So, right. and then he took the jacket and she took her shoes back. 
Now, and then the he other, went to take a shower. Well, because those jackets were all the rage back then. Oh, yeah. Like, all the popular... I mean, I was in elementary school at that point, and all the popular kids had those football puffy jackets. Yeah, starter jackets. Yep. Well, and then the other thing is he wasn't real fond of Steve anymore because apparently he was wanting to date Tanya and Steve would told him no she's off limits you're no good for her kind of thing because he was friends with Tanya so he didn't like Steve so that could have been another reason he would have taken the jacket Mm. and then sold it but here's another kind of theory that I thought about too is you know teenagers and I'm not saying in any way that Tanya was sexually active I'm not trying to insinuate I'm just saying that this would be a theory that if Tanya had had if she had had sex with Elijah and then she was trying to get him to break up with Sarah what if she told him she was pregnant and Elijah's like Mm. I don't want any part of this let me walk you home or let's go hook up in the graveyard because that's where people, a lot of people hung out in that graveyard and they smoke you know, weed and drink. Nothing hotter than hooking up in a graveyard. Hooking <laughs> over some dead bodies. Yeah, I know. And so what if he took her out there and killed her because he thought she was pregnant? I, I don't dis, I don't dislike that. Yeah. And she really wasn't. But but she was lying in order to get oh because that's a break crazy that's, you know there have yeah. been I bet you personally know at least three people who were crazy ass hoes in high school they were like I'm pregnant just three? actually yes see <laughs> yeah. at minimum three I graduated with like seventy seven people is all and I could tell you <laughs> more than three so yeah but I don't that's why I don't dislike it yeah. I mean, there, and there's no way, honestly, to prove that theory no. unless he were to come forward and say it. And now he still lives in Topeka and he's married, has kids. Yeah. Come on, Elijah. Yeah. Tell, Tell your story. Tell your story. How else did you get the jacket? We heard Sarah's story. Come on. And the night before, she kept a diary just like all kids that were dumb back then and wrote down everything that they did wrong. I didn't have a diary. Does that make me really weird? I had one, but it was kind of like, this is what I did today. I got grounded so much. I played so video much. games. I read. I played outside. I, I never, got in so much trouble. It was never about feelings or anything. I w- was the person who wrote letters back and forth to my friends and then kept the letters. And I remember keeping oh, the letters. My mom listens to this podcast, so I know she's like, Well, yep. you're, in a, you're in a grown up adult with yeah, I'm a grown ass woman. Now, so. Yeah. So I kept all the letters in this cooler in my bedroom. And one day I got out of school and she told me to go straight home because I was in trouble. And I was like, I didn't do anything, that, you know? And she had found that cooler and read the letters. I was in so you much trouble. You kept them in a cooler? Yeah. I wasn't going to keep one on the bed. Everybody looks places like that. So I kept them like in this cooler and they were closed up. Oh. And it talked about sneaking out of my friend's house to, you know, all this stuff. I yeah, just I also never so talked about trouble. that shit. <laughs> my notes were like so stupid. Yeah. It, I it, was the good kid. If I had the internet, I would have been <laughs> so screwed. My mom, I'm going to have her call in and confirm that I was the good kid. Yeah, right. I I wouldn't Mm. believe it. Not at all. So this is what her diary said on the Friday night before the Saturday that she went missing. It said, go to Steve's to see Elijah. Go to Randy's, cruise with Sarah and Crystal, stay the night at Steve's or Brian somewhere. So her dad had said that she had been grounded earlier in the week and that he was going to let her spend the night somewhere Saturday night. But on Friday, she had said that she was going to stay at Rachel's house, right? That's well, that was going to be Saturday night. Plan. But this was for Friday night. She said she was going to stay the night at Steve or Brian somewhere. And she was going to Steve's to see Elijah. Uh, 
Yeah. So that's a little weird to me. And then she told a classmate that she was going to a party that Saturday night with Sarah and Steve to drink beer and smoke pot. Fun. Yeah. Now, and then that she was going to stay at Rachel's house. So maybe staying at Rachel's was the original plan. But nothing was entered in for Saturday night, you know, like upcoming. So I do believe that her whole plan was to be with Elijah. I don't know if Sarah knew about it, if she was covering for him, or if she really was in the dark about... Yeah, I can see it being a trap for Tanya mm -hmm. so easily, and I can see Sarah being completely in the dark as well. Right. Come on, guys. It's like you're old. You have probably have your own kids, and if this happened to them, what would you? I thought you were talking to me, saying, come on, guys, you're old. I'm like, that'd be the second time today I've been told I was old. <laughs> well, me too. Yeah. So let's, let's not go there. Now, what would the reason be for him to come in and take a shower if he hadn't killed her? He left someone's house. If he left Haney's house. So the other idea I had about that mm -hmm. is that he went and hooked up with Tanya, and they parted ways. And he knew that Sarah was coming back. So he went and took a shower to oh, not smell like that makes sense. Tanya. Mm. That was my last thought. But I but really then, think somebody closer to her killed her. But that would have left it open for like a stranger, like a random killing. Hmm. Like she was walking home alone by the cemetery and it was right. just an opportunity, some pedophile or just gang or whatever. And they just decided to maybe like rape her and she resisted and it was an accident or didn't mean to kill her just meant to hold her down and ended up strangling her i don't dear god <laughs> I, I, really, I, just think, I just it's all it just pops into my head i'm like it's that could thanks happened. dateline jeez that was really <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean you could have just said she ran into a stranger that <laughs> but you know I just always assume the possible worst thing. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know if I can come back from that. <laughs> but Steve was also brought in several times, and he actually came into the police station, talked to the police, and he took several polygraphs. Here's the thing. You know how I feel about polygraphs, mm -hmm. but he failed a couple polygraphs, but then the next time he would take it, he would pass the section that he had failed previously and then fail a section that he had passed previously. Was he on drugs? Yeah. Oh, I'm, okay. you know, I'm sure he... Yeah, because he had to cope with murdering someone. <laughs> Steve? I don't know. Now I'm just throwing <laughs> shit. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know how you do that and how you would take that literal if you were an investigator. Yeah, and like, we're not even supposed to believe polygraph results anymore. Right. And I mean, their technology wasn't as good as it is now. Yeah. Yeah. So I, take that for all you want. But, yeah. I mean, so I wouldn't. at least he came in and talked to them. Elijah wouldn't even come in and talk. And he still hasn't talked, which I find is weird that if he is on the suspect list at because all. If Steve talked, if Sarah talked, he should have talked. And I get that you can't arrest him. You d might not have. But at least clear your name. Like, if you were truly innocent, you would want to talk to them to clear your name. Right. But if he's avoiding talking to them, that just says something completely different. So you just let him go without talking to him because you can't arrest him? You, you can't. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a cop. I don't know how you can go about that, but like it seems like you can your bases. somehow make him come in for an interview at the very least. Mm -hmm. Arrest him on something. He's been arrested several times for stupid things like not paying his bills, mostly not paying his bills. <laughs> he reminds me a lot of Shelton. Like he's just constantly not paying bills one of his bills was like just a couple hundred dollars and it was like in 2002 and just this past year it was settled oh my god like <laughs> their courts are worse than ours but if 
he was questioned at this point, this many years later, would he Is it even, even worth it? Like, yeah. he wouldn't remember or he'd make something up. Unless he was guilty. And then he would remember and then he would definitely make something up. But would his story match up with anybody else's? And what would Sarah say today? Because Sarah and Steve had this Facebook exchange not yeah. too long ago. And Sarah actually said that Haney had also told her that Elijah walked Tanya home. So why would anybody else lie about that? Who, why are they covering for him? They said that when he moved back from Topeka, he considered himself a crip. Like he uh, said that he was in a gang. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they were afraid of him. I mean, Possibly. can you imagine, like, just the middle of fucking nowhere, Kansas, and then, like, yeah, I'm a crip. <laughs> <laughs> Such a badass. You better is. not wear red. Right? Is it red? <laughs> no, crips are blue. Yeah. Bloods are red. <laughs> yeah. There's the... Okay. I I'll think. Try. I don't know. <laughs> don't get it wrong. It's a fact now. Don't I piss said it wrong. somebody <laughs> off. <laughs> okay, that, look. That's you. That's on you. I don't know. I'm not Amy's address is... No! <laughs> <laughs> nope i won't be Four part of that so uh, you've you've said you tried to track elijah down but like no social media his name is spelled no. kind of weird and so his wife is on social media but he is nowhere to be found anymore he was on social media for a while okay. but now he's no longer there but you can find his address he still lives in topeka okay but he doesn't hold a steady job for very long yeah. and I don't know, like, if he I might was a, not be a true, like, set out to be a killer in his life, but something traumatized him, like, because he killed someone. <laughs> oh, my God. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I just said it could have happened. Right. And that could have caused him to go down a bad path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Allegedly. Drugs, drinking affects his ability to hold now, a job Now, Steve down. has now passed away. And, and he was the one with the alcoholism. Yes, okay. he had alcoholism. It affected his liver and other functions, mm -hmm. which happens. To me, I feel as though he, this my personal opinion, he had probably had nothing to do with it. And if he didn't, it's really sad because everybody was pointing fingers at him his whole life. And he has three children mm -hmm. and... I think he basically got ran out of Spring Hill because everybody pointed fingers at him for this. And if he did do it, then let him burn in hell. But if he didn't do it, I really feel that his alcoholism and everything was because of... Covering something Yeah, up. him being forced to live his life kind of in the shadows of... Mm -hmm everybody pointing this finger at him this all of his life and I just I don't know I feel bad for him if he really had nothing to do with it but he passed away so that's one story that will never be told if anything comes of it later on if if it needs to go to trial and that's what happens in a lot of our cold cases yeah. because people are dying and even though this is you know m most of these people are 40 or young you know that's still happening people are dying there's like two people that are dead in this case and what are they going to do just keep waiting keep drawing it out it's the farther you get away from the actual crime the more people are going to forget the more people are going to move away and become hard to trace right down. if they say they can't find elijah they can call me i can go find him I mean, that, <laughs> th it we isn't him. rocket science <laughs> you know these people can't hide we can find osama bin laden we can find elijah i'm not gonna say his last name but you know i can find him yeah now if it was the fake pregnancy thing or if it was the jealousy thing then Sarah probably knows more than she's talking about, even if she wasn't there, and because Elijah wouldn't have kept his mouth shut about it. He would have said, I did this, or he would have slipped up. But teenage girls, 
I don't know how for 20 years they would have kept their mouth shut. Teenage yeah. girls just talk. Or they, they would have let something slip. Right. Uh, accidentally. And especially if Sarah and Crystal were together when it happened, you put two teenage girls together, there's no way that secret staying safe forever. Like, my daughter even said to me the other day, she was like, if you ever killed somebody, just don't tell me because I would not be able to keep a yeah. secret. I was like, don't you worry. If I ever I killed mean, somebody, you'd be the last person her I roommate, told. You, in her room or her friend that can't keep a secret either. Oh, yeah. Her they're, friend can't keep a secret at a all. They yeah. are. Yeah, I would never tell them anything at all. I w- if I won the lottery, I wouldn't tell my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> You'd just disappear. <laughs> I would. I'd be like, bye. <laughs> yeah. I, to the point where there's times where it would make more sense to just fake your own death and just be gone, <laughs> you know, than to tell the truth. But I will have an interview with Tanya's mom and just to get a little bit of information about what she thinks, what mm-hmm. she's feeling. I, I wouldn't want to put myself in her shoes for anything in this world. I know that it's the worst possible thing in the world to lose a child, but to lose a child and then not have answers and not have somebody pay for it for this long yep. Is ridiculous and she's done so much legwork on all this because she's gone and she's hired a private investigator and she's gone to the doors knocked on the doors and done all all the things that the police yeah. should have done and she's got no answers she's got the answers that she thinks she has like a narrative in her head of what yeah. she thinks happened and that's what you would do you would lay awake at yeah. night and you would be thinking of all these narratives that you think happened to your child yep. and it's awful. And she needs justice. And if any of these people, if Sarah, if Crystal, if any, Elijah, any of them know what happens, even the smallest amount of knowledge of that night of what happened, then they need to, if they have to lawyer up and protect themselves and then tell the little bit that they know and get it out there. You know, you can get protection for yourself if you just know, if you know who yeah. did it and you were maybe a little part of it, but you didn't, you know, pull the trigger, so to speak, then lawyer up, get immunity. I know. People don't understand. I mean, you, most of these people have kids now, so they should know what it feels like and what it would feel like if you lost your child like this. Yeah. Have some sympathy. Be a decent human freaking being. Yep. Have the day you deserve. Especially if you're keeping secrets. I know your secrets and I'm telling on you.